Made up in my mind, it's believable Saw it at the time, it's achievable Now I got the drive Since the creation of the internet Every industry has been turned upside down Amazon changed retail Uber changed transportation YouTube changed video forever With the invention of crypto, money is next at the, At the speed, speed technology, technology is growing, growing the, the future, future of money, money and, and securities are digital. digital. Nine, Nine out, out of ten millennials, millennials do not, not trust, trust banks. banks. The, the value, value of money, money relies, relies on trust. trust. Government debt, debt is higher than it's ever been, been before. Central, Central banks, banks continue, continue to print, print money. money. Fortunately, Fortunately the world, the world has, has a, a new solution. solution. Experts, Experts predict in seven, seven years, 10% of the world's, world's economy will be in crypto-based based assets. Today, Today, one million, million people have access, access to the financial industry. industry. Crypto is about, about empowering the other six billion people by, by banking the unbanked. unbanked. Do, Do not underestimate this. Do you wish you invested in Google, Amazon, or Netflix? before anyone ever knew about them? $1,000 invested in Netflix turned to over a half a million dollars. At Token Metrics, we help you find the next Netflix. Token Metrics users think differently about investing. They are early adopters looking for financial freedom. They are people who see a better world a world without international borders. We believe in a world where everyone has access to the next financial revolution. At Token Metrics, we are creating a bridge that gets you to that revolution. We will help you make sound investments in this new world. The world's best investors do not rely on their intuition. They embrace technology and AI to invest. Token Metrics uses AI to find invisible patterns in data to help you invest and trade in crypto. In the past, we have used our data-driven system to achieve financial freedom. Now, we are giving you the keys. We all right, all right. We're back, we're back. Apologies, everybody. Yeah, it seems uh, YouTube doesn't like having the two split screens or something like that. I think that that might be what's causing the issues. But anyway, let's soldier on because uh, we only have uh, Bill for a short time. So I think let's let's hop straight into the crypto therapy. So Bill, what's the, 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 what's the take on Bitcoin? All right. So the take on Bitcoin, this is a weekly chart. All right, so I believe Bitcoin is at support. I understand people like my colorful Fibonacci extension lines or speed resistance lines. So right here, you can see Bitcoin is right at support near 8,500. And I've got other work that confirms this. So in my heart of hearts, I feel like this is crypto Christmas right? Crypto got dragged down and it's a thousand dollars off sale. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you should go out and go crazy, but you know, I, I can't bring myself to sell crypto here. Okay. When you have ether, right? Ether hung, you know, topped around 220, went down and then has come back and is hanging out at 220 and trying to hold tough, right? Equities are getting hammered as we speak again. Uh, and crypto is holding. Now, in terms of the therapy part, let me tell you where I needed therapy. So I went and looked at this, okay? I said, gee, I wonder what the dollar is doing in all this. Because normally, in a time of crisis, people buy the dollar, okay? And if you look at the dollar index, Okay, obviously last week 
the dollar got smashed. Now, crypto folks, get ready for this. Hopefully you have a padded floor. What currency did they buy? They sold the dollar and they bought what currency? Well, guess what? They bought the euro. Now, the euro is interesting for two reasons. One, they have negative rates. And the only thing the ECB can do from here is literally buy a fleet of helicopters and drop euros from the sky, right? They've done everything else. And they've got problems in Italy to the point where they've got police barricades and they're playing professional soccer games in completely empty stadiums. So I'm saying to myself, let me get this straight. Everybody is buying the euro, which is going to get printed and handed out with impunity because they have to, right? No dissing fiat here. No disrespect. You know, people are hurting and they are literally going to have to print this thing and hand it out. Okay. So if they're selling the dollar and they're buying the euro, okay, the Fed is most likely going to have to come in and do something big. What is that? I don't know. But if it doesn't work, okay, in other words, if the stock market rallies and then stops and rolls over, Okay, I'm looking at total market cap excluding Bitcoin here. Okay, and I see crypto trying to hold in. All right, so we got a really uncertain world. I'm not a doctor. I think my bet is that crypto holds. Uh, my bet is that equities will go down, but there'll be Fed response in the short term. And that Fed response is going to trigger a bull market in crypto for, for one simple reason that crypto is the only currency out there that can't be just indiscriminately printed and handed out by governments, right? So they may have to do it to keep people alive. Again, no disrespect. But in terms of currency integrity, okay, I'm not sure, even though crypto is a speculative asset, that we should just say, oh yeah, well, if stocks go down, crypto has to go down. All right? So the crypto therapy is this. Try to hang in. Right. I mean, if crypto, if Bitcoin's below 8,400, that's not good. Right. You know, if Ether is spending time below, like, say, 212, 215, that's not good. And you have to manage risk accordingly. Okay. But if the Fed comes in big to save equities and it doesn't work, because again, you know, the US has a, a carrier strike group headed for Syria and Turkey. Turkey is a NATO ally fighting Syria and the Russians. You know, we went from equities priced for complete perfection to pandemic and war, like in two weeks. So that I think is good for crypto, but crypto has to prove itself, right? Like we can sit here and theorize all day long, but we got to see some price action. Well said, well said. Uh, thank you for that, Bill. Let's take some comments here from the audience. Okay, uh, just give me a minute here. Okay, so Dylan says, well said, well said. James is asking, what game was played in an in a empty stadium? Right. Well, I, I'd have to I, I'd have to look that up right here. Let me let, let me look it up. My guess is probably somewhere in Italy where they've yeah. been hit pretty hard with the coronavirus. And I do know there have been some some games that are being canceled or postponed, I believe. Then uh, let's see here. Right. There's a soccer match in Milan that was held in an empty stadium. Wow. I mean, the question is, was there a ref? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I, that, that's pretty it, intense. Yeah, that's kind of, that's unfortunate. You know, the Japanese are freaking out because of the Tokyo 2020 games. Oh, man. That, you know, I mean, right. it, this yeah. is, this is that's like, you know, they, Olympics. you know, it's like. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. I didn't think about yeah. that. That's going to you know, be, be almost a gonna catastrophe. Be, it's going to be really hard to swim in nuclear biological chemical gear. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I mean, because Japan is a travel three warning, according to the CDC, I think. 
Let me see if I can pull that up here. Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure in major country, major airlines stop flying there. Yeah, because I know South Korea is definitely on the list. I think I think Japan might be slightly behind South, maybe not as elevated. Let me see if I can find the travel notices. Okay, so here we're looking at this is the CDC Centers for Disease control right so this is their map for covid19 risk assessment by country so we got italy china and japan and korea let me see if i can zoom in here so japan is sustained ongoing community transmission so it's like if this is tier four it's like tier two so it's not quite as bad as south korea or china but it's up there uh, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely going to impact the entire world. Uh, it's it's already even reaching us here in America, in, in uh, Bill's backyard. Okay. Right. All right. right. So. Uh, and, and of course, we're different from the rest of the world. Right. Right. Um, I just looked up on the uh, online here. Um, okay. Uh, Five hundred eighty-eight thousand guns registered in Texas. <laughs> Five hundred eighty thousand guns registered in the state of texas right so japan Uh and south korea have the coronavirus with Uh you know very civilized polite societies like singapore right Uh okay in the united states it's a little different okay uh i know bill has to head out soon any any last words bill well folks let's cheer for crypto right and in many ways this is our defining moment you know, we had to put up with the first wave of selling all risk assets. And, you know, now, now is the time. Be not afraid. Manage your risk. You know, get stopped out if you have to. But as far as I'm concerned, this is it. All right. Great words. Great words, Bill. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. And for anybody, please follow Bill at Crypto-Noble on Twitter. Crypto underscore Noble. Yeah, Crypto underscore Noble. Sorry. All right, Ian, thanks a lot. All right, take care, Bill. Bye. We just landed Down on the moon in a Lambo. All right, all right. As you guys can see, we have we changed the background. We we have the the moon Lambo. Uh this was yeah, the moon Lambo frame. Then this is to my crypto family in Lagos, Nigeria. Hold on, let me just so big shout out to crypto africa to sorry to cheetah africa thank you cheetah africa for the the portrait uh i know this is now a meme but i got this on the this right here on the lagos crypto world tour in december 2018 so it was a pleasure thank you guys for the gift as you guys see i kept the gift then we got the shout out to youtube And to everybody out there, crypto family from the YouTube plaque, you guys probably can't see it. Okay, there you go. 100,000 subscribers, Diary of a Made Man. Now we're launching a new channel, Tokenmetrics. So hopefully we also get one for that as well. But hey, I couldn't do it without you. So thank you to everybody out there who's watching. Thank you for being there. Let's get back to the moon. Because as we like to say, all season is right around the corner right around the corner okay so i think let's now dive into the the ama legos yeah legos in the house okay um let me oh actually i forgot one thing i forgot one thing guys so i am trying out something brand new so we call this the audience call-in yes call-in you can call this number and leave a voicemail and we'll have our team go through the voicemails. And the idea is I want to start playing audio voicemails from the audience on our shows, kind of like a real radio show, a real TV show where the audience can call in. So this only, this is a US phone number. So anybody calling internationally, there may be international fees, but for anybody in the US and Canada, This should be free to call. The number is country code one for for US, 
1-202-600-7805. That's plus 1-202-600-7805. And leave a question using voicemail for next week's show. Then on next week's show, we'll go through and find the good questions. Uh, if obviously, it's crypto, so if there are any prank or trolls, those, those, those will just be filtered out. But if you have a serious question, and as opposed to just typing the question, or maybe we, we're not able to answer all the questions in the AMA, leave the voicemail, and we'll be able to go through and do that. Okay, uh, Crypto Life 101 says you should get a toll-free number, Ian. Uh, yes, yeah, so that, that's something will kind of be a, a natural progression. So if this is a hit, then we'll progress to a toll-free number. Okay? All right, so that's the PSA. On t so time for the AMA. Go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 279149. That's 279149. Okay, all right, so first question of the day. Hello, Ian. Dash or Zcash for long-term point of view, Ian and Bill. Okay, so Bill has left the show already, uh, but here, let's let's answer the question. Just uh, let, let, me, let me just pull this up here. Okay, so... The question is Dash or Zcash for long term. This is why we have token metrics. So let's pull up and compare both of these. Okay, so he said Dash. Dash right now is 26 on token metrics moon index with a grade of 74. Fundamental 76, 68 for technology. Well, Zcash. So they're pretty much the same. They're both in the 20s, so Dash and Zcash. So at this particular point in time, token metrics favors Dash over Zcash. Uh, but obviously that can change. But at this point in time, it does favor Z, uh, Dash over Zcash. But this, this is constantly changing as well. So if we're going to look at a long-term investment, Let's not look at the technical analysis score at all. Let's look at purely the fundamentals and technology. Now these do also do change based on the weights as well. So that's one kind of that's something to keep in mind. Uh, I will say though, it depends on how long you're you're holding. Let's assume you're holding longer than one year, because long term you want to pay long term capital gains taxes. You don't want to pay short term taxes. Uh, so for that matter, I think Dash over Zcash at this point in time does d does make sense. Uh, so if we look at the market cap, market cap of Zcash is four fifty four million. Market cap of Dash is about eight hundred million. So I mean, Zcash does have more potential for growth, but I mean, at this point in time, I would trust Dash over Zcash. Now, that could change as well. It also depends on how long you're going to rebalance. But assuming it's just one year. But I don't think you, you can really go wrong on either of those two. Right? Uh, so, if anything, I think one thing you could add to it is look at your portfolio and see which one would diversify your portfolio more. Maybe your portfolio is very volatile and you need to have something in there that's not as volatile. So, maybe kind of factor that in. Or maybe your portfolio is the opposite. So anyway, it's, it's tough to tell. That's kind of my that's, that's my take. Not financial advice as usual. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that question. Let's go on to the next question. Okay. All right. Hi Ian. What do you think about Adam with internal fights that are going on between the team members? If you're talking about the, the the founder stepping down, I think I think the the co-founder stepping down. I think it's it's, it's a minor hiccup to be honest. Uh, this is just my opinion, but 
the tech for us is still pretty much consistent. Adam is still at this point in time fifth on our token metrics index. So what does that mean? That means if we had to hold 10 cryptocurrencies, Adam would still be one of them at this point in time. Uh, Bitcoin is number one right now, just kind of based on how the market has evolved in the last few weeks. Uh, now, token metrics in a way kind of called this because a while back, it, Bitcoin for the first time in a while was out of the, the top 10. And then Bitcoin ended up dipping. So now that it's back in the top 10, it actually views this as something very, very bullish. But anyway, back to Cosmos, Adam. I mean, Adam has been pretty consistent. For the most part, it's been in the top 10, maybe worst case, top 20 or slightly out, out of the top 20. But for the most part, it's been, for the most part, it's, it's basically been, hold on, sorry. Uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, just give me a second here. I'm getting uh, a text. Let me turn, turn off my texts. <laughs> Just give me one second, guys. Apologies. Okay. All right. So next question here from the audience. All right. Do you think privacy coins will be useless if Bitcoin implements privacy? Very, very good question. Very, very good question. So will privacy coins be useless if Bitcoin implements privacy? You know what? Possibly. <laughs> I mean, possibly. But... The, the privacy coins that do survive will be those that have other use cases besides be, be, being just purely privacy, or maybe they have other innovations. So I know Ethereum is also looking into implementing privacy. So that could, that is something to also keep in mind. But I would say big, it's hard for Bitcoin to do everything well. Because it's, it's hard for Bitcoin to be a Swiss army knife. Because Bitcoin is going, because it's hard for Bitcoin to be a store of value, to be fast in transactions, to be the best in privacy, to be the best with smart contracts if they ever do do that. I know there's RSK and Riff and all that. So while it's easier for a particular cryptocurrency to to do one thing well, to focus on the long tail. So because of that, I mean, I don't think, actually, I don't think all the privacy coins can really be killed per se. If they can pick one thing and do it well and do it better than Bitcoin can ever do it, then those privacy coins will still survive. So for instance, if there's a privacy coin that's focused purely on having the best privacy, something that maybe not even Bitcoin can, can compete with, that privacy coin will, will still be around. Or if there's a privacy coin that's maybe more compliant with regulation, Maybe that can kind of create its own niche. So, I mean, I think Bitcoin can take a large market share for privacy coins from privacy coins in the future. But if you ask me, could it kill all of them? I don't think so. I, 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 but curious to see what everybody else thinks. Let me know in the comments below. All right. Is it time to sell altcoins for BTC? Well, I mean, everything is relative. So if we go to token metrics, token metrics favors Bitcoin at this point in time. Bitcoin has the highest grade. So if we had to pick one cryptocurrency at this point in time, it would be Bitcoin. However, having a portfolio purely just Bitcoin doesn't really make sense. So if you're building a diversified portfolio, I would, I would stress that you have lots of other cryptocurrencies. So let's say you have 10 crypto cryptocurrencies. So in this case, we would go with the top 10. We would go with Bitcoin, Maker, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cosmos, Matic, 
Decred, Binance, Holochain, and Basic Attention Token. So at this point in time, these would be good picks for the top 10. So if you have an altcoin that's out of... that, Let's say you have an altcoin that's not in the top 20. I would strongly reassess whether or not it's a good time to be holding that altcoin. It would be something you, you probably really, really believe in and maybe you're willing to hold it th through a tough, rough patch. But I mean, for the most part, I would say those in the top 10... At this point in time, looking at fundamentals, technology, and TA are optimum. So these are, are the best alts, in our opinion, based on our data and analysis. And any alts outside the top 50, I mean, I personally would not be touching those at all. Uh, I would also stress uh, why anybody else, I mean, it's just ask yourself why you're really holding them at that point in time and see if you can really convince yourself as to why. Okay, all right. Next question. What do you think about BAT? So BAT is in the top 10. So right now we, we think highly of it. So let, let's pull, the, pull up the token page. Let's, let's see if we have price predictions for this. Okay, so price predictions for basic attention token. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned before, we kind of had a rough, rough patch <laughs> in the last uh, haircut with our database and models. But for the most part, the actual price in February performed better than the predictions. And now, in the, in the last few weeks or so, it's been lower than the, uh, the predicted price. So the models right now are basically seeing everything They're basically predicting everything is going to kind of just be pretty stagnant. Yeah, pretty much for the most part, it's going to be stagnant. Okay, hold on. I have to double check with our team. I think I think it's showing market cap as opposed to price. Uh, I'll talk with our admin about that. Let me see. Let's pull up Bitcoin. So... These graphs were just launched today, so there might be a few. Okay, Bitcoin is fine. So not sure why it's showing that for basic attention token. Huh. Yeah, so let me let me just pull up some random coin. Let's pull up Icon and take a look. Yeah, so I'm not sure why it's showing market cap. Okay, let me just send this to my developer guys. Just give me one second here. I'm doing it live. Okay, all right. All right, sorry, guys. Um, back to the show. So, I mean, overall, basic attention token, we're bullish on it at this point in time, just kind of based on it being in the top 10 ranking. Uh, so things are kind of in alignment. So if we go back here. So right now, overall grade is, is good, just based primarily on the, on the fundamentals. So fundamental grade. Uh, has a weight of 50% at, at this point in time. And then technical analysis, great as well. So if you go to the technical analysis, it's, it's bullish. That's why it's in the top 10 of the index. So it, it did drop in price, but so it essentially is now more underpriced than before. So this could be a good buying opportunity. 
All right. Next question. Your thoughts on Thundercore token? DeFi? Big VCs invested in it? Uh, Thunder. So we did look into Thundercore almost two years ago, and it was a hard pass. I mean, they were very early. We had a call with their CEO that didn't really go so well. So I uh, passed on investing just based off of that. And we haven't really heard much of it since then. So, I mean, not really bullish on it at the moment. So, I mean, other than that, can't really say anything else. It's not really in our system at the current point in time. Okay, here I'm saying we might have technical analysis data on it. Okay, from a tech, from a TA perspective, it's neutral. So nothing here at the moment. So overall, I would say now's not really a good time for an entry in this particular project. Now, fundamental and technology, we haven't, we haven't really done a review on it since we looked at it over two years back. Uh, but just looking at purely the momentum, TA side of things, it's neutral. Okay, uh, next question. Do you think cryptos like ENG, gaming cryptos, will help crypto adoption? So do I think projects like Engine will help crypto adoption. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think gaming is going to be it's something that people can already envision using virtual currencies for. I'm a big NBA 2K player, so I love playing my career. In 2K, they have a virtual currency in there. I mean, so I because mean, I have a, a ton of uh, 2K coins. And uh, if I could cash those out, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. And for anybody out there, whether you're playing Fortnite or any other game, because I think if, it would be cool if you could port your currency out of that and take it to other games, maybe by the same developer or the same gaming studio. So whoever is able to create that and manufacture that and have that take off is going to be a winning game studio, game engine, uh, and then also a winning blockchain, whether it's engine or what's the other one, Ultra? So, I mean, I know lots of companies have tried to do it. Nobody has really done it yet. And I think game studios don't really have the incentive to because like 2K what, and and, uh, and take an interactive. Why would they want to give people the opportunity to take money out of their games and move that money elsewhere? They want to keep everything locked into their game. And I think it's a bad approach. You really have to have an open model where you can come and go because if you create that, I'm not sure about the legal and compliance and regulatory issues around that because I'm not sure where that, that then becomes a security or they have to register with FinCEN and with the CFTC. But I mean, that would, would be a big win. Like in a dream world, if you could, because that's then really creating a virtual world where you can do stuff virtually, make your money and cash out. All right, let's take some questions here from YouTube. I was trying to, to do the chat here from Restream, but uh, let's see if it's working. Okay, yes, it is working. Okay, so Dr. B, CP Chain. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at CP Chain. I don't think that is in the system at the moment. We've been slow in terms of adding new... Uh, new tokens outside the top 100 because people have mainly been focused on the top 100 uh, and then just trying to do some other stuff with the team. Yeah, so CP chain is not in our in our database at the moment. Okay, so let's go back here. Hourglass says, theoretically, do you think that the market cap of all cryptocurrencies can exceed the amount of value within all fiat dollars in the world? Um, yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's something that's definitely possible because if you look at regular 
capital markets, the amount of money in the world exceeds the amount of fiat in the world, mainly because of derivatives. Because you can use leverage and borrow money and essentially through financial engineering, create more money on paper than there actually is. Uh, th that's partially why we had the 2007 and 8 recession when it comes to the to mortgages and everything because people would take bad mortgage loans and then go 100x leverage. I mean, you guys have seen this in crypto as well. Anybody who's trading on with leverage or on futures exchanges, you have one BTC, but you can have 100x leverage with that. And on paper, have 100x BTC because you're basically borrowing money that's, that, that's not even there sometimes to then make more money or lose money. So I think that is something that's possible. So I did cover this on my uh, recent interview with Cointelegraph. So anybody out there who subscribed to Cointelegraph, check out their YouTube. I had a video on there. It was pretty long. It was about over a half hour long interview with them. It was me and uh, Naeem Aslam, I believe, for crypto, his uh, Forbes crypto analyst. All right. On to the next question here. Okay. ZNN, Moon Paper. So, okay, I've not heard of this, but I, I would say go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com and submit the, the projects here. This is kind of a good way for us to, to keep track of which projects our audience wants us to look at the most. Uh, don't, don't worry if it takes a while for us to get to it, but eventually we will get to it. But this is just kind of a good place for us to document everything and know what things to prioritize to our audience. All right, so like for instance, if we look at just, these are the projects people want. So people really want us to look at Lending Block, Resistance, Matrix, Skycoin, BTU, Cody. So this is pretty much the order. We'll be looking at things. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, we just know it is going to take some time because the, the team's kind of been swamped. Okay. Uh, next question. We already answered this one. And we answered this one as well. <laughs> Okay, let me go through here and filter through some of these questions. All right, so question is, can Zcash be the next Bitcoin? Vitalik, Gavin uh, Andreessen, Anderson, Gavin Anderson, and others are too optimistic about this altcoin. What do you think? Um... I mean, at this point in time, I don't think so. I don't think it can be the next Bitcoin. Uh, right now, Bitcoin is ranked higher than Zcash. If anything, we think Maker and Ethereum could be the next Bitcoin. I mean, Ethereum just because they are building so many things. I mean, so in my interview with Coin. Telegraph, I'll just kind of recap my, my statements on why I think Ethereum has a large probability of surpassing Bitcoin in market cap in 2030, right? So I know all the BTC maximalists are calling this hearsay, calling this paganism. I mean, but hey, I mean, our religion is the moon, <laughs> okay? We don't care about maximalist this, maximalist that. We just worship the moon, to the moon and beyond, because the moon is not the limit. But anyway, all jokes aside, my, my, I would, I would say three, three points why I think Ethereum can surpass Bitcoin in market cap. Point number one, I mean, Ethereum's developer community is growing at a very rapid pace. And it's very realistic that in the next 10 years, the Ethereum developer community could be larger than the Bitcoin developer community. I mean, so that's, that's nothing to really scoff at. In 10 years, the Ethereum developer community could surpass, because let, let's pull up GitHub here. 
Okay, so just give me a minute here as I pull up uh, Bitcoin. Okay, so looking at this, this is the Bitcoin GitHub. So Bitcoin is being watched 3,500 times. It's been starred 42,400 times. And it's been for 25,200 times. Okay, so now let's do the same thing by looking at Ethereum. So let's look at the Go Ethereum implementation. Okay, so being watched 2,000 times versus 3,500 times. And then 42,000 versus 25,000 times. Okay. I mean, so obviously Ethereum is not as popular with the developer community as much as, as much as Bitcoin. But I think in 10 years, it's feasible for Ethereum to surpass Bitcoin in popularity with the developer community. Right. So that's, that's the first argument I have. Then the second argument I have is really DeFi, decentralized finance. Just think about this. The total market cap for gold is estimated to be about $10 trillion, while the total market cap for derivatives is estimated to be over $500 trillion. That's over 50x times bigger. Now. If the same thing, because Bitcoin is essentially digital gold. So Bitcoin, in my opinion, yes, you could have derivatives on Bitcoin, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Yes, it will happen, but I don't think it will happen on as large a scale as it will on Ethereum. Like Ethereum is leading the DeFi, the decentralized finance movement for a reason. So as a result, I think the winning protocol for DeFi is going to be Ethereum. And I think all derivatives in the future, if they're on a blockchain, will be on Ethereum. So the potential of having all that capital in that market on Ethereum is going to make Ethereum grow long term. So that's, that's really my other point. Then the third reason why I think Ethereum can surpass Bitcoin in market cap is really Ethereum has been, in my opinion, innovating and has better governance it definitely still has its growing pains but the governance has for the most part been better than bitcoin bitcoin i mean everybody's trying to fork bitcoin left and right you have bitcoin gold bitcoin satoshi vision there's so many bitcoin forks have lost track uh you had segment issues i mean just trying to get stuff done on bitcoin creates a civil war internally <laughs> and it's hard to innovate when you're constantly having civil wars with miners with developers so it's chaos. It's, it's literally chaos. It's like trying to run a business while going through a divorce. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's really what Bitcoin is. I mean, that's not to say I, I don't like Bitcoin. I mean, as you can see in our ratings, Bitcoin is number one right now. So, I mean, I'm not really trying to poo-poo on Bitcoin. Bitcoin is number one right now in our ratings. But I'm saying 10 years from now, in the year 2030, it's probable I mean, meaning not 100%, but there is a possibility that Ethereum could surpass Bitcoin in market cap and in usage and adoption. So that's, that's really my, my take on that. Okay, so I know I was kind of rambling there. Uh, I went, went from Zcash to shilling Ethereum. <laughs> but hey, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> okay, next question. The financial crisis is here. What should we do? Uh, good question. Good question. The financial crisis is here. I would say uh, don't live large. Minim minimize your expenses. Live frugal. Uh, make sure you have enough money to last you the next 6 to 12 months in case things get worse, in case a recession comes. All right, in case this is even global, 
in case people start losing jobs. So basically, don't be flashy. Don't act like it's a bull market. Uh, be humble. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm basically speaking to myself. Uh, but just be prepared for the worst times. But also, I mean, as an investor, now, well, not now, but I would say when we're in a recession or when the market is very, very bad, that's the best time to buy the dip. Because by definition, when you invest, you want to buy things that are underpriced. And things are underpriced on red candles, on red days, when there's blood in the streets, when everybody's trying to sell and get out. That's when things are underpriced. That's when you get things at a discount, at a steep discount. I mean, that's like you, we're basically going garage sale shopping. Because you don't want to buy when things are expensive, when things are overpriced, when things are in a bull market. You want to buy in a bear market. So that's why in the last few years, the last bear market we had in crypto, that was the best time to buy. When Bitcoin went down to 4000 almost 3000 that was the best time to buy. Because now that we've kind of been getting out of that bear market and going into a bull run, now things are getting more and more expensive. All right? So, I mean... In terms of what you should do, you should have some capital to invest and buy the dip. But let's say you don't have that. Let's say you, you're broke, you're maybe wrecked. What do you do? Um, just cut down as many expenses as possible. Like, and then it, find ways to supplement your income. So if you're working a regular job, nine to five, maybe get a side hustle. Maybe it's... I mean, Gary V says, go to garage sales, get stuff and flip it uh, on eBay or what, what have you. Maybe you drive for Uber. Maybe you do short-term rentals on Airbnb. All I can say is what I was doing back when I was working at IBM, even though I had a nice job, I was doing Amazon FBA. I was doing Airbnb. Uh, I, was doing, I was working as a freelance videographer, filming videos on the weekends. So I, because the average... Wealthy, wealthy person has seven sources of income. So you want to diversify your sources of income. If you have only one source of income and we're getting into a financial crisis, life is not going to be great. I mean, so you want to diversify your sources of income. You want to have multiple streams of income coming in. So that's really my advice. All right. Um, Let's see here. Let me see if we have any other questions from the audience. Okay. All right. So how do you know which investment place is correct? I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, let me see if I can rephrase it. I'm guessing you're asking how do you know what investments are correct? Well, the thing is, you don't know. I mean, nobody ever knows. If anybody tells you they know, I mean, they're, they're lying to you. But what we can do is try to create a system and thought process and then stress test our logic and system and try to find what things are probable, what things are more likely to happen. So when we say, for instance, that, let me pull up our ratings again. Right, so this is our particular system, which we call token metrics. But lots of investors have other systems out there. You know, Buffett has his own system. Bezos has his own system. So this is our system for investing in cryptocurrencies. So this system is based on looking at fundamentals, fundamental analysis, technology, and technical analysis, and also lo looking at, at it from an analytics approach and using artificial intelligence and machine learning to help us come to decisions. So this is not saying that for instance, Bitcoin is likely to do well, but it's telling us that out of the cryptocurrencies out there, the one that is most probable to do well is Bitcoin. So when we say probable, we mean that, so let's say 89 out of 100 times, this is where you would rather have your money in at this time out of all the other cryptocurrencies. Now, this can change based on this particular interval, but for us, this is what our system is telling us. Now, once again, this is not financial advice. This is just our system for us. But lots of anybody can create their own system and thought process. 
But for us, this is kind of what we, what we do, right? So everything is based on probabilities. So nothing is kind of concrete. You can't really say that, hey, this is guaranteed to go up. I mean, that's, that's basically illegal. Uh, but for us, these top 10, so Bitcoin, Maker, Ethereum, Litecoin, Cosmos, Matic, Decred, Binance, Solo, and Basic Attention Token, these are the ones we think are most probable to do well in the next few weeks to a month or so. All right. So now our ratings update in, in almost every single day. So they can change a lot. So what was once in the top 